Hey, so this is Avier from the ExoKit dev team, and today we are looking at the Magic Leap 1. This is going to be an engineer's review slash first impressions slash walkthrough of some of the initial apps and some of the tech that goes into making the device work. So for some context, I am a JavaScript developer. I'm working on bringing JS and WebXR to Magic Leap. But I also dabble in C++ and graphics, and it just makes me happy to see the real world being meshed in front of my face. <laughs> so this is one of the first experiences available for Magic Leap. It's first party, it's called Create. And this is the setup portion that it has you do. You're just kind of looking around the world um, at the points it tells you to look at. But the real point of doing that, besides being kind of fun, is it's generating the mesh. That is pretty much the main reason you would want a Magic Leap. It basically turns VR into AR. Uh, even in the beginning of the video, you could see some of the crazy tech that goes into making this work because the device had already been used once in this room, so it knew to reuse a piece of the mesh from the previous session because it recognized some similar features. So there's some AI pattern matching going on there in SLAM techniques. So another interesting thing about the meshing is that if there's holes in the mesh, and there is at first, then if it's in a wall, it will get filled in by this abscess. So the first time that I saw that, I was actually really freaked out because I thought that there was an actual hole in my wall. Uh, but then when I realized that it was Magic Leap, I realized that that was actually proof that the people who thought that the opacity of the holograms would be a problem don't need to worry. There you go, you can see uh, one of the holes I was talking about there. Uh, you really don't need to worry about the opacity of the rendering because unless you're looking at something like a really bright window, it just feels like VR. Everything's super bright. So we're about to finish up the setup portion and we're gonna crack open our tool case for Create. Um, you can kind of see where this is going. Uh, this is very similar to some of the initial experiences like Tilt Brush, Blocks, um, A Painter, Medium, and that kind of stuff. Uh, you can see the occlusion happening there and the physics that are colliding with the wall and the pillars in my apartment. So this is me doing some painting. I figured I would paint a sword. Why not? But it gets a lot more interesting than that because you can drag the sword around and you could pick it up and use it as an actual sword. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, this does feel very much like the VR of AR or the AR of VR, something like that. Because um, you feel like it's the same kind of immersive experience except it's not happening inside of a fully constructed world, it's blunt. It's blended, blent, I don't know if that's a word, into your reality. Uh, so as you can see, you can add stuff to your walls, like kind of throw on stickers, and there is whole physics. Uh, I guess the blocks are the initial test that everybody tries. But you can throw the blocks around, and provided that there's no holes in the mesh, then it kind of just works. I think the resolution of the meshes is something like one centimeter, or maybe a bit more than that, uh, between one and five centimeters. Uh, you also saw there that there is a little bit of um, hand occlusion that you can kind of see where the content overlays your hands. And the reason for that is, I think, just the design choice because there is actual hands tracking, it's just not being used for any sort of occlusion, unlike the meshes themselves. And you can also see here some of the procedural painting that you could do with prefabs on the world. Um, they kind of just snap into place. Uh, the walls and the ground, and of course you have entities, you have the jellyfish, the classic regular fish, and you can slap both around, it's really neat. And you have the T-Rex, who will 
be walking around. Surprisingly, um, at least I was surprised by this, the audio plays a huge role in uh, the Magic Leap experience because um, some of it is due to the field of view because it's kind of different from VR um, where just having an audio cue reminding you where something is is just super important and super valuable. Uh, you're never really lost. Uh, you also have here, I guess, uh, rockets that you can fire. I thought that was an excellent idea. Uh, there's some cases where it goes wrong in a second, uh, but we'll get to that. Uh, so what else do we have here? Oh, this, this one's neat. This is the dominoes. Um, you can see where this is headed. When you don't have dominoes, you can at least play virtual dominoes. And you can see actually a bit of glitching there. Some people were asking like, um, how's the tracking compared to something like Vive? And I would say it's basically Vive. Um, because even with Vive, you ha do have the occasional uh, tracking misses due to some sort of occlusion happening um, between you and the uh, lighthouses. But in this case, it's just occlusion between the different lights that are going around that are interfering with the meshing. So what else do we have here? We have the uh, foods that we can drop and interact with the entities in the world. Uh, you can even see the T-Rex is colliding with um, those dominoes that were dropped back there. And he's being occluded by an object as well because it was part of the mesh. Uh, the way that the, the occlusion works is that there's just an, essentially a depth pass that's done with these meshes that you can see here and that's fed into the engine and a shader just does a depth test uh, before it does the render of the world. And here's one of those cases where things go horribly wrong and the jellyfish gets stuck with a rocket and then that rocket's flying everywhere. Um, this is actually much more fun to experience yourself, so sorry for the spoilers. Uh, this part freaked me out a little bit the first time that I did it, just kind of launching a rocket outside of the window, not really intentionally because I thought I was going to hit somebody. Uh, but as you can see inside that menu here we can turn the meshes on and off. That's generally an option for most of the apps. Um, you can either leave it on or off. I generally prefer to leave it on just because I'm playing with the device and seeing how well it meshes. But that really doesn't matter. So um, Magic Leap OS called Lumen OS actually has two runtimes for its applications. Uh, this one is called the Lumen Runtime. It's the one that allows you to run multiple applications at once. This is the social uh, app. And as you can see, that's me doing hand gestures to myself. There's also eye tracking and blink tracking and the head is moving and of course the hands. So this one is a Lumen runtime, which essentially allows you to run multiple apps at once. Uh, this is just one, but I'm gonna move it over to the side and then we can crack open another one um, while this one is still running. Uh, there's also male and female avatars. Uh, so there you go, I just closed it. And we can open another app. This one is the gallery, which is just basically uh, the media that's stored on the device, except you can kind of see it in front of you. And all of the models are also rendered if you have any models in your um, device saved from something like Helios. There you go. You can see we are going to look at the gumball dino. Tracking actually works really well for this. But um, one problem that I did have with the device is I feel like the near field of view is too close for some things. Like when you see a tiny little astronaut, you want to go over and look at him. But um, the near field of view is kind of like about 30 centimeters, I'd say. Whereas like if you wanted to put like the astronaut like maybe one centimeter up to your eye, you can't do that. And I think that has nothing to do with um, any software or anything. It's just um, 
an aesthetic choice or maybe like they didn't want your hands waving too close in front of your face uh, because that would mess with the uh, meshing. So this is the Helio browser. Uh, it's basically a web browser that runs on the Lumen runtime where you can crack open tabs and put different pages around your space. But there is one interesting Magic Leap only feature in it, which is that it supports ML model tags, which allow you to essentially set an SRC equals something dot FBX, and that will be overlaid on top of the world um, and kind of like pop out of the page. Uh, another interesting feature with that is models can be dragged out of the page. Uh, kind of like images, but they can be dragged out and saved to your environment uh, for use in other apps, which is kind of neat. It's the beginnings of what's going to be possible with HTML in uh, augmented reality. Uh, now we're going to enter the Magic Leap World app, which is the App Store. Kind of gives a taste of the app delivery mechanisms and the showcases. Uh, so they've invented a new version of like cover screenshots, which are these dioramas. When you actually look into an app, then you see like a live 3D preview of what the app is supposed to represent, uh, as well as you have your traditional screenshots and so on. So I was mentioning before there is two runtimes that are available on Lumen. And one is the runtime, and one is just the regular immersive SDK. And so Create was an immersive app. Uh, these ones that we were looking at were runtimes, but this is going to be another immersive app. And the difference between the runtime and the immersive apps is the runtime allows you to run multiple smaller experiences at the same time, and they do uh, cooperative multitasking, whereas immersive apps are more of your traditional VR experiences. This is another one of those immersive ones. It's a collaboration with a Sigurros. It's called Tanandi. Um, and a really neat thing about how it starts is you're following these fish that kind of like fly around the world. But I figure with a developer mindset that the reason that they did this is not only that it looks cool, but because as you're looking around, it's doing meshing. Uh, so there you go, Sigurros. Uh, this is a really cool part coming up as well. It's pretty much the first time that I had some sort of synesthesia on my hands where basically you're getting shocked by this thing even though there is obviously no haptic feedback from a hologram uh, you can kind of feel it on your fingers and just kind of like tingling it's really wild uh, but all these experiences are really basic at this point it's just basically effects and demos for how you can interact with the world uh, when you have a mesh and yeah, I think we have a lot of different places that we could go from here, especially when you integrate something like uh, NPM and all of the awesome content that's been done on the web with like WebXR. Uh, we actually just got the go-ahead from Magic Leap to ship V8, so should be fun. So yeah, that's the initial first impressions for the Magic Leap 1 Creator Edition. Uh, pretty much meets my expectations in all respects. Uh, so if you don't mind me, I'm gonna go and get creating.